right, let's... So I'm gonna do a movement guy right now. Let's go through some of the ways, both how to move, why you should move like that, and how to execute it. So to start off, executing in this game is very, very dependent on the buffer. If you dash and then dash back right away, but you don't do it fast enough to get the very first, very small dash dance like this one, this thing, it will buffer way before. So see if I, see if I do that, like see how much later it does the back back one. That's kind of just what happens with when you have buffer this much. Um, so the buffer in this game is not like in some other games where you will put input something and then it will just do it. But it does have some of that buffer too. The hugest buffer is when you press something and then hold it. So if you see there, like I do jab, then dash, it doesn't dash. But if I do it and then hold, it will do it. Um, dashing is a, has a slightly smaller buffer, I think, or maybe none. It just has like the standard 10 frames that was in Smash 4. So like you can definitely press dash and just hold it to get the dash back. And this is really good for doing like this, like fares and dashing back, jabs, dashing back, all that good stuff. It makes it way easier to stay consistent even if you hit something, which adds a bit of um, freeze time when you hit because of the hit lag. Overall though, you can dash into a move in about 14 or 15 frames, I think. Um, it's very, very fast. And the only thing is that you can't really control the distance. So you can't really do a shorter dash. Like there's no way for me to dash really, really short and jab, um, at least as far as I know. So it's really, it's really different from Melee. Melee is a game where you have fine control over the small dash dances. This is not really dash dancing if you're actually being like semantic about it. It's fox trotting. Dash dancing is, you can do this dash dancing, but it's the super short one where you barely go anything, but that that isn't useful at all really, other than just like making smoke and making people think you're good when you're actually not doing anything. And just putting yourself in a situation where you can't shield. Overall, I would just use fox trotting and then use moves. Um, wave dashing is in this game. You can do it by Using jump and Z on non-tether characters. And it looks like this. And even though it might look good, wave dashing in the traditional sense is not good at all. So I, right now I'm pressing X plus Z. And you just buffer it. Um, it's not very good. Not at all, in fact. You can, you can use it as a directional dodge like this. Um, and that's how I would use it mostly be to cross someone up. Uh, like. Let's see I'm in the corner, right? Like you could do jump and then you can air dodge through them like that. But it has 18 frames of landing line, which makes it basically useless as a purely offensive option. You can do it as a far range bait though. So let's say you dash something like this to come or fox trotting. And you want to do this. You want to jump towards him and nair. So some people, a lot of people, let's say they're trying to parry it or they're just trying to dash dance themselves and try to whip punish it. They will react to the jump animation. And this animation looks very different from the jump animation. So you could do this to um, just do like a short hop in place, which is what I would recommend most of the time. Because then if you see that they're not baiting it, you, you can still like just act out of it instantly or like fair. Some characters will benefit from doing like this where you dash dance, you start the jump, and then you jump back, which will make them like with whatever they're doing, and then you can dash in and punish. This is pretty laggy though, um, but it could potentially be useful. I think especially if you may be full jumping, you can like, you can use the full jump, which makes you rise faster, to so give them even more of a, like this guy is jumping tell. So I would actually rather do that than do this because this looks a bit too similar to the dash dance. But you could definitely use it. I won't, won't say it's useless, but it's not much more than a gimmick most of the time. Now wave landing, I would also say it's not very useful for most characters. Most characters would rather just jump and grab if they wanted to like wave land grab. However, in situations like this, you could potentially use it. It's very slow though. I would honestly only do it if someone is shielding here and I could cross them up and then maybe grab. Or if I have a character with a really fast jab, like let's say Squirtle's jab, which is two frames. 
Then I can wave on into jab, which is it, still slower than melee, but it could catch some people off guard. Something to keep in mind more than a great mix up like a melee. On platforms, you can do some wave dashing by dropping through and then pressing Z. This isn't actually very different either. What I would do is I would drop through further to actually bait that you're gonna fall down with an aerial. So you go through it like that and then you can fake it again. This is something I wouldn't really do as a like mix up like that. But let's say you're on battle for the top platform and someone's coming down with invincibility. And you're, you can fake going off the platform so that they think, oh, it's gonna go to the bottom platform then. And you can go away. You can also do that, like run off the platform and then wave them back. But overall, it's not too useful, but um, I'm sure I'm sure there's situations where you can use it. There, are, there is, however, one situation where I would use it, which is when you're ledge jumping. Ledge jumping in this game, you can act really quickly out of it. Um, you can an air or whatever, but I think wave landing down is actually really good. So you can do a wave land like forward like that, but the wave land down, although it is very still extremely laggy, like see how long it takes before I can shield. Um, it's good because you can start the ledge jump, and if you see that they jump up here, and try to press a button on you, you can usually air dodge in time and maybe at least be at advantage. Um, at the bottom. So it's not something that you would want to do rather than like ledge jump regularly, but it is an option where you can like, oh shit, they're gonna punish my ledge jump and stop. Um, on battlefield, there's another thing that I, that directional air dodge this is really good for. And this is essentially when you're stuck at the edge, you can jump and then you can air dodge. I don't know if Chrome can do it, it should be, yeah. He should be able to do it. Oh no, okay, there we go. Yeah, it's pretty hard with Chrome. Other characters will definitely have an easier time. And probably doing it really straight up will make it easier. Like that. But yeah, that that air dodge looked pretty good. So it's the same thing, right? Where you like you can start the ledge jump, see if they're attack, see, and you can kind of attack. And then we can uh, air dodge on reaction to get to the platform. And a lot of people when they ledge trap, they won't actually look for the, look to cover the platform much. And this will work on a lot of different stages and all the battlefield copies generally. Depends on your character though, uh, just something to keep in mind. Now, the big thing with air dodges is that they are directional now, which means that, let's say you're faring like this, right? You can air dodge back to the stage instead of having to use your up B or grabbing the edge. So that's definitely faster. That's something I've already started doing. And also, you can grab the edge mid air dodge. So you can do like that. So like, th these two alternatives are pretty significantly different, right? Like, that one, where your opponent will definitely have time to recover, with that one. So I think that's really useful. And you can also, like, air dodge down. So like, you can do use that as a fake, for example. Or maybe to uh, ledge trump someone. I think that could be interesting. Yeah, I think that's pretty much covers it for air dodges. Overall though, for movement in this game, run up jabs are very good, especially if you're a long roll like Chrome. Um, once you, there's a small difference between entering dash and Foxtrot and entering full run. Once you enter full run, you can turn around and I'll put this really, really slow as everyone can. So this animation, this turn animation, is not something you generally want. Like doing this as a dash dance is really slow. But you can fake with it. And you can also like, like that. Just to trick them into thinking. The, but you can, basically you can just act out of it almost right away. Like so. You can't shield in it though until the very end. So it's not something I would recommend doing a lot because you can just also do that. <laughs> right, like you don't need to actually do the skid animation. However, there's another reason why I show you the skid animation. And that is because, look at this F tilt, right? I'm running, I'll press down and F tilt. I'll even run and just press F tilt. Same thing will happen. Wait, if it, 
I need to press down or let, let go so that you get F tilt and not dash attack. Now, look at this F tilt. Right, I'll press back and slide really far. And if, if you do it fast enough, you don't even notice that he's going into the skin animation. You can both do it forward and backwards, and let me show you in real time. This slide's really fucking far. And this is obviously extremely useful with many different characters. Um, now, how far you can slide is actually move dependent. So, down tilt will not slide at all for Chrome, and up tilt will not slide at all for Chrome, even if you do the turnaround. However, some other characters can do is sliding up tilt and sliding um, down tilt as well. You, I don't think you can do a sliding forward down tilt though. That would be pretty broken, but I don't think that's possible. Let me know in the comments if, you know, if you can do that. You can do this with F smashes and some up smashes as well. So, this is generally if you would want to turn around with the up smash, like an up smash that starts in the back or something. And you can do this with down smash as well. F tilting though is generally the most useful one, and it's something that I think everyone is going to be using very soon. You can't do this in the very, very beginning of your dash. See, I'm doing the inputs now, but I'm not getting any length. But as soon as you pass that initial dash length, this length, you can do it. Um, so that's definitely something to master. In general, full jumps are really good in this game. You almost teleport to the top, so they're really good at getting out of the posi bad positions. Like instead of rolling, which is heavily nerfed, you can now just full jump out of the situation. You can full jump regular air dodge. I think regular air dodge is currently really underused by people. It only has 12 frames of lag instead of 18, so you can use it to get in on some projectile characters, some of the ones with more lag. Um, but with really far reaching hitboxes like the heavies, especially if you can cross them up and you have fast ground moves, you can air dodge in, turn around, and hit them. This is something people did in Brawl a lot, especially, but even though the leg is slightly higher, it's still really good. Way bouncing is in. Um, if you don't know how to way bounce, there's probably someone linking a tutorial in the YouTube comments or in the Twitch chat. I'm not gonna go a full walkthrough, but it's really, it's Move dependent on what moves can do it. Chrome can do it with his neutral B, he cannot do it with counter. He can do it with side B. And you can use this in varying degree, varying ways um, to change your momentum. And it's really, really important to learn with some characters. Like Wolf's, Wolf really needs it with his blaster and Lucas needs it with fire. Chrome can use it as a mix up. Like you could do that, you could do that. Like, make it look like you're trying to go on stage and then whoop, I'm back. Yeah, I'm not sure if I said it wrong, but it's weight bouncing that changes your momentum. I don't know why it's called wave, but you know. It's also different if you turn, like, depending on what way you're facing. So, this will obviously go that way, whereas this one will shoot. Uh, face the right way. There's also Roaring. Um, this is the same skin animation, the slide one. If you jump during this one, you will jump and you will preserve your momentum. And you can do approaching backers that way. This is something that's been in since Brawl, but it's something that a lot of male players don't know yet, and it's really, really useful. Especially with characters that have good backers, but maybe not so good forwarders, or maybe, you know, like a combo fair and a kill backer. This is really useful. And you could combine this with wave bouncing to do an approach like that, where you jump towards your opponent and then you jump backwards with the neutral V or like you change your momentum. Yeah, so full jumps are really useful, especially with characters that fall fast. Um, short hops are also incredibly useful, especially with characters like Chrome that have amazing aerials, you can just keep hitting them. Since when you're dashing in this game, Unlike melee, where you can just run up shields right away, there is significant lag. Jumping isn't as risky compared to staying on the ground because you can't CC in this game, you know, or at least not in a good way. And you can't run up shield as easily. So a lot of the disadvantages from are reasons why you wouldn't want to jump in melee are fine here. Or like they don't they exist for the ground too, so you can't approach and then shield on reaction. Either way, so jumping might be the better option a lot of the time, especially if you have good aerials. 
Um, however, dashing is still incredibly good. There's some technique called auto short hop. I went through this technique in, or auto short hop aerial basically. I went through this technique in detail in my buffer video. Basically, if you press jump and A attack, like C stick or A, or even B I think, no, maybe not B attacks. The game will just give you a short hop and then do the aerial as soon as possible. Um, even if you hold the button. This actually screws over full jumping a bit, so you have to be wary of pressing A too soon when you're trying to do an instant full jump aerial. But it can help for some moves, especially moves that you need to do as soon as possible to auto cancel. It's really useful for that. This also makes it easier to buffer um, when that? you want to combo. I think someone was up like that. I can just hold um, X and A plus up, and it will do the upper really really soon especially online this is useful so even when it's lagging because of shitty net code you can still get the grab combos at least i personally do not use tap jump because i think being able like you don't need to um use jump for anything you don't jump cancel grab that just comes out um you don't need jump to up smash out a shield you don't need jump to up the other shield now up being out of shield is actually something that's kind of weird for me uh, I'm used to pressing up then B because I'm jump canceling it. In this game, you need to press both of them at the same time, and it's not okay. It's not good if you just hold up and press B either. You need to actually time them at the same time. So that's going to be something that a lot of people have trouble with. If you hold both triggers, you can tilt your shield without worrying about uh, spot dodging. It's pretty good, especially because in this game you can actually shield poke characters pretty easily. So I think that's really important. I will say that. A lot of melee players I've seen have trouble against projectile characters because they keep trying to dash and then they keep getting hit in the initial dash animation. Against those, I would uh, advise you to use run more, I mean walk more, instead of uh, full on dashing. Or maybe like doing like this, so you dash away so you can see, is he throwing a projectile? And then dashing in again. So you have more time to see and react before just like running right in and getting hit by a projectile. Um, what movement should you be using in neutral? Now this really depends on character. With Chrome, you can really use both because it's a good round jab, good dash attack, good short up nair. Um, but with some others, like let's say Charizard, he doesn't have a good lagless aerial. So he would rather want to stay on the ground. And some characters like Squirtle doesn't have great um, ground moves, but he has great aerials. So he wants to jump. Fast falling or not fast falling is generally a mix up. You go different lengths depending on when you choose to fast fall or if you don't do it at all. And this is really useful with characters like Chrome, where if I roll to the edge here, you can jump and then like go all the way there. Or if he fast falls, he'll fall through the platform and then he can attack here. With like, say an upper. Yeah, <laughs> Chrome, Chrome. I get started, it starts a meme and now it's, now it's the same thing. Why do people fast fall aerials? So fast falling aerials is so that you get get to the ground as soon as possible and that you can act as soon as possible. So now I'll show you two different two differences, right? If I don't fast fall the aerial, which it does still call because chrome or chrome. Um, And if you do fast fall, wait, it's actually really hard to do, <laughs> to do with short up there. Okay, so fair, fast fall, not fast fall. Like, it's significantly faster if you fast fall it because you, hit, you get to the ground almost instantly and you can start your next move. Whereas if you don't fast fall, see how much slower it is? Compare this to. And this is even more significant for some characters. So basically you fast fall to get to the ground faster. And sometimes when people pr predict that you fast fall, you can choose not to do it and stay in the air longer. So in this game, when you want to dash attack right away, which I think is a, a big, big neutral tool for many characters, you do not actually want to press dash A. Because if you do dash A, like this, you will get an F smash. See how he can, like he, he steps forward and then does an F smash. You want to do dash forward and then c stick forward not down like it used to be if you do c stick down like this see how it does the down tilt you want to do the dash 
forward and do dash forward on the stick as well. And this works, works with both tail stick and smash stick. So that's something that's really useful to just, you know, like do a dash like right out, out of shield, for example, to punish something. Or if you're just like standing around or you see a move, move just inst instantly dash attack. Okay, so we just found out that you can do running sliding down tilt without turning around first. It's really hard though, but basically you run, you press back, and then you press down on the tilt stick. So it looks like that. It's pretty timing, uh, like pretty a pretty strict timing, but it's definitely doable to get consistent with it. And yeah, this isn't again like this doesn't work with every character, but with characters like Incineroar, I can see it being really useful. Okay, so last thing to add, right? Um, if you want to drop through platforms, it's generally better to be walking rather than dashing on platforms because if you dash, it's, it takes a while before you can go through. Whereas you walk, you can walk, drop through at any moment. Um, yeah, that's really it. So if you're on platforms, you should be walking. Um, I think that's it. I think that should be a good mo movement guide.